Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the planning and development meeting of December the 7th. Attendance has been taken um, with the exception of Councillor Wheat, who is joining now. Um, we are all online. Um, and the first order of business will be the election of the chair and the vice chair for the upcoming year for this committee. Before we begin, I would like to recognize that because this meeting is being held electronically, there is no mechanism for a secret ballot. And so any votes that will be held will be held by the raising of hands in open session. Um, if there's any tie, it will be done by lot. Um, do I have any nominations for the chair? Councillor Coleman? Nominate Councillor Bell. Pardon? I'll nominate Councillor Bell. Councillor Bell. Councillor Bell, do you accept the nomination? Sorry, I do. did you? You do? Okay. All right. Are there any other nominations? Seeing none, can I please have a motion to close the nominations? Oh, Councillor Pierce, sorry. Did you? No, move to close. Move to close. Okay. And Councillor Gatward seconded. Okay, since it is by acclamation, Councillor Bell, you are the chair. All right, we are now moving on to the election of the vice chair. Um, may I please have a nomination for vice chair? Councillor Pierce? Councillor Miller? Councillor Miller, do you accept the nomination? I'll accept it if any, unless anybody else wants it. I'll, I'll accept it, yes. Okay. Um, are there any other nominations? Councillor Bell? I, I second, uh, counsel, second uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor Pierce's motion for uh, Councillor Miller. Okay, good. We're in. Okay. Um, all right. Are there any other nominations? All right, then could I please have a motion to close nominations? Mayor Bailey, Councillor Coleman. Okay, um, by acclamation, Councillor Miller, you are the vice chair for the upcoming year. Uh, Councillor Bell, you now have the chair. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, appreciate yeah, your uh, efforts there. Um, so we have uh, an agenda tonight, which is dominated by Ward 4 and Ward 5 uh, issues. Is, is there anybody who would like to add to the agenda as it stands? Noting that we do have a, an addendum <laughs> arrive this, this yeah. afternoon. Uh, if there are no additions to the agenda, then could I get somebody to move the agenda? Moved by Mayor Bailey, seconded by Councillor Coleman. All those in favour? Thank you, agenda accepted. Uh, item three, declaration of pecuniary interests. If you have a pecuniary interest, if you could raise it at the appropriate time, thank you. Uh, item four, I don't believe we have any delegations, petitions or presentations, is that correct, Alicia? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. We have multiple um, people who are attending to present, but not as a formal delegation. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, moving then on to the minutes from the meeting of November the 2nd. Could I get somebody to put that on the floor? Uh, Councillor Miller, seconded by Councillor Pierce. Any comments or questions to the uh, minutes as written? Seeing none, then I'll call the vote. Those in favour? Carried. Uh, any business arising from the minutes? Seeing none, I'll move on to item seven. Item seven is uh, public hearings under the section 11 of the County of Brant telecommunication tower protocol. We have three items, two of which are to be received for information. And the third one is in the form effectively of an approval or support from council. Uh, I'll begin with the first one, seven one, which is 47, 447 Baptist Church Road. And Dan, I think you have this one. Uh, that is correct, Mr. Chair. Uh, I trust you guys can see my screen. We can. Excellent. So this is a uh, 
an application for telecommunications tower for a property located at 447 Baptist Church Road uh, being presented for information purposes only this evening. So the property location is located at 447 Baptist Church Road. Uh, the subject lands are highlighted in blue on your screen. We are uh, just uh, west of Frank County Road 22 and east of Mulligan Road on the south side of Baptist Church. The subject lands currently have a total area of approximately 2.1 hectares and contain an existing dwelling and uh, accessory structure. And the surrounding area consists of agricultural uh, related uses with uh, residential dwellings. The official plan land use designation is agricultural with natural heritage, the agricultural in uh, the off white color and the natural heritage is the green band running through the site. The zoning bylaw uh, class classification is generally agricultural, again, with the natural heritage, which is the green band running through the site. The proposal is um, a telecommunications tower application proposing to establish a 65 meter tall steel self-supported lightning protected telecommunication structure situated within a 15 by 15 meter compound area surrounded by a 1.8 meter chain link security fence. As part of the application, the applicants have provided a detailed site selection report and a detailed site plan. Uh, just some preliminary notes, a public information session was held last Thursday evening on December 2nd, where we did have uh, the attendance of two residents to, to uh, with interest in this application in this particular location. The proposed tower is located outside of the natural heritage area, uh, as well as the GRCA regulated area. And in this particular location, no trees or vegetation are proposed to be removed. So this site has been reviewed uh, in accordance with the 2020 County of Brant preferred location protocol. The uh, site location is identified by the blue dot. The yellow dots are neighboring residents. The, the location of those dwellings. The 120 meter uh, dash circle identifies the preferred location from any natural features, uh, being the natural heritage area. I can confirm that we did receive comments from our environmental planner and the GRCA who had no uh, concerns with this particular location. Uh, the larger circle is the 195 meter circle which identifies uh, three the setback the preferred setback distance being uh, three times the height of the tower and we can identify that there are or there is one dwelling located within this area so in terms of next steps uh, we'll continue to receive comments from staff uh, we'll work with the applicant to address any comments or concerns received from the public it's my understanding that there is a resident uh, here this evening to speak to this item and staff will formalize a report and bring back a recommendation based on a review of the county grant protocol. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dan. If you could uh, just give us back the full screen. Thank you. Uh, any questions to Dan from the committee? Councillor Coleman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my, my only question or comment is, is uh, has there been any uh, feedback from the Hamilton International Airport? From, sorry, through Mr. Chair, the Hamilton International Airport? That is correct. Uh, for, as part of the technical circulation, no, but perhaps the applicant would be able to speak to any of those considerations. Thank you. Seeing no other questions, I'll then move on to uh, ask if the applicant or the agent of the applicant wishes to speak. If he or she does, if he or she could make him or herself known to us and give us your name and address. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Tracy Peel on abs. I'm the uh, agent for the applicant. Um, my address is uh, 23669 Chatham, Ontario. And I do have a presentation that I could show the committee, if you yeah. allow me. 
Please go ahead. Okay, just gonna load it up. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. So I'm gonna try not to repeat uh, what the municipal planner has uh, mentioned, but uh, this is what a uh, 65 meter tall self-support tower elevation looks like uh, with the compound area on the bottom, uh, which is secured uh, with uh, controlled entrances. Uh, the design has been selected for this particular area because it's rural in nature and um, the lattice self-support tower allows the views through the tower so that you can see the sky in the back. And it also looks very similar to the nearby hydro corridor that is located to the south of the property. Um, as uh, the planner mentioned, uh, where the location is um, proposed um, off of Baptist Church Road using an existing gravel driveway. So no new driveway is required. Um, this is a zoomed in version of what the property looks like. Um, for the site specific, again, using that same driveway, uh, the compound area will be located right next to the steel Quonset hut, hut that is existing as an accessory structure. And the hydro corridor utility will be uh, directly connected to the road to an existing grid system. And again, a uh, typical proposed uh, compound area, this one is 15 meters by 15 meters. So the triangular shape shows the uh, proposed tower and there'll be three cabinets. They're just man size doors that are cabinets for the location of the hydro. Uh, there's no um, generator or there's no sound or light um, looking through the, uh, the, the proposed uh, compound area. Uh, so why do we need this tower in this area? So it's a combination of uh, drop calls. Uh, we've taken a look at uh, through Land Squared and Shared Tower Network where some of their customers would go, uh, they would lease space to three uh, main users. Uh, they're usually TELUS, Rogers, and Bell. Um, so there is an identified need uh, to improve telecommunication coverage. Uh, this map shows where all the other towers are located. The blue circle shows where the proposed site is. And as you see, there's this sort of circle that is void of any other telecommunication towers. The closest tower is one to the north, which is about seven kilometers away. Uh, a typical 65 meter tower usually only gets about two kilometer coverage. So there will still be a lot of uh, need for additional towers in this area. Um, the current coverage are, are, are shown on this map, which are who are the users. And as you can see, many of the users are those that are in a car driving through and by the subject property. So that would improve some of those connections in vehicles as well as home and businesses. As part of your uh, photo, uh, as part of your protocol, we do provide photo simulations. We've taken two views. Um, so here is the location of the site. We've taken uh, view one is uh, from the west and view two is from the east, just to give you a um, idea of what it's gonna look like. So this is uh, from Baptist Church looking east. Um, as you can see, there's the tower in behind the trees. Uh, there is a resident uh, that lives on the other side of that trees, of those trees. Um, so this is be the, the view um, past those trees. Uh, the view too from the corner of Baptist Church Road and Highway 22 looking west. Um, this is where that tower, it would look like here. You can see the Quonset hut. Um, and then you can see the hydro corridor to the south of this, which uh, the design sort of blends in with that landscape. And uh, we're pretty accurate uh, with uh, GPS and, uh, and photo simulations that uh, that's a pretty close to true look of what it's gonna appear like. Um, so looking at your protocol, um, there are items that are required for us to consider when we take a look at sites, distances from residents. So as noted um, that the planner showed in his uh, circular diagram that uh, a minimum of 120 meters or three times the tower for residential uses are recommended. The nearest residential is short of that, 103.9, and based on the size of the tower, we need 195 meters. But that existing residence is located behind trees, and it's in a rural area, and it's, again, 
uh, a large hydro corridor to the south. So it should blend in very nicely. Um, it should have very little change in that view and vista for the area. Uh, distances from natural heritage. We are outside of all natural heritage features and we are outside the GRC regulated area as well. Uh, distance from heritage buildings. There are no heritage buildings on this site. Topographical prominence. Um, there are no towers available for co-location and the topography in this area is actually quite low. So the neighbor to uh, the side of us is actually quite high. So the tower is actually gonna look quite small uh, in comparison because of the change in uh, landscape. With respect to views and vistas, the proposed self-support tower is designed to be su suitable uh, blend of the area. Uh, Co-location is being provided again by making uh, room for three other incumbents on the tower. And we've specifically put the tower within an existing cluster of buildings. So it doesn't sit by itself in the middle of nowhere. It's closer to that Quonset hut. Uh, compatibility, the site is located in an existing rural residential area. Um, there are no agricultural lands are being removed out of productivity for this property. So we're in an already disturbed portion of that existing rural residential lot. And access uh, is another item to be considered. And we're using an existing access, no new access is being proposed. So again, this is just the location of where that existing uh, residence is. And again, it's it has a lot of uh, trees surrounding the property. Uh, this is the side yard of the existing property as well. So there are only three windows on that side. And we've made sure that we've not, not proposed a tower in front of anybody's front door or main view of their front or rear amenity space. So why do we need it for the benefits of technology? So um, often uh, the benefits are in a rural area are the agricultural equipments that are being used, the GPS capabilities and farm applications in the field have changed and they're using telecommunication now. Um, often you hear this new term called internet of things. This is when other devices are talking to each other. So you've got your cell phone, your smartwatch, your smart car. Um, those are all items that are talking to each other that need telecommunication. Um, EMS, fire, police, and then the general people who are now working from home, because of COVID, uh, they're using more cell phone to make their calls. They're using more data during text messages and emails and, and web browsing. Paging is also available for these towers and video streaming. Um, so Industry Canada is the governing body who approves this. And as you know, you've, you've approved a few previous towers uh, that I've been before you as a delegation. Uh, so you are aware that what we look for from the County of Brant, is it a letter of concurrence or a letter of non-concurrence? But Industry Canada takes into consideration everything that they hear from the public consultation and the municipal consultation and makes their decision based on what's been submitted. Um, just as a review uh, for municipal consultation, we've done pre-submission, uh, formal application. We've provided a site selection report, um, photo simulations for the public consultation. We've notified all the public 30 days in advance, 500 meters in radius, an advertisement went into the newspaper and a sign was posted on the, on the property. We have held a virtual open house, uh, two attendees attended. Uh, the comment deadline was December 2nd as well. And all questions um, have been received and responded. And tonight is the public meeting. So based on the comments that we have received so far, um, we have been asked about approvals, process, leases, ownership, and just to confirm that I said approves those towers, STC will lease the space from the owner and then providers will lease the space from STC like Bell or uh, Rogers. With respect to health, the towers are safe. Safety code six is used to ensure that towers are in compliance. No one will get a permit unless they can prove that they will be under um, no negative impact on health. With respect to the environment, again, towers are safe. There's no impact uh, on animals and we are outside the uh, local CA regulated area. Site selection, uh, a large radius of properties were identified and uh, we looked for a willing host, a host or a landlord and uh, the subject property was the, the willing landlord that agreed to a lease. 
Oops, uh, taxes, resale property, you probably hear that often. Um, in some situations, towers will actually increase the value of nearby properties um, because it is something that more and more people are using uh, as a, a service. Uh, log grading and drainage, it was noted that that area is wet. There is some standing water. And uh, I do confirm that prior to construction, a lot grading plan and a geotechnical report will be prepared as part of the construction package. And timing, it's all up to um, approval for ICED. So that completes my presentation and I will stop sharing. Thank you, Tracy. Uh, does committee have any questions for the presenter? Start with Brian, then John, and then Joan. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'm sure you're to the delegation. Um, and I mentioned it before to the planner. Uh, Monroe International Airport is uh, uh, less than uh, seven minutes by uh, vehicle from that spot. Have they been notified? And second question, will there be a beacon on top of that tower? Thank you. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, to the committee, NAV Canada is a required um, approval prior to the issuance of the uh, ICED approval. So I, Industry Canada will require us to consult. Um, that, that, con that consultation has not occurred yet. We have not re had any results, but it'll be up to them if there'll be a beacon or a light, and they'll also regulate the color of the tower. Thank you. John, John Diaz. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, through you. Uh, a couple quick questions. You mentioned the hydro corridor that's that's nearby this, um, and you were you were saying that, uh, that this tower wouldn't look out of place because of the hydro corridor. Do you can you tell me how tall the hydro corridor towers are compared to this? Thank you, through you, Mr. Chair. Um, I am not familiar with this particular um, project for the height, the requirement, but generally hydro corridor height for towers are anywhere between uh, 90 and 135 feet, uh, meters, sorry, okay. feet, feet. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, and the second question I have, you spoke of the cover, the additional coverage that this is going to uh, bring on board and you, you spoke of approximately, you said the towers give approximately two kilometers range. Um, now, I appreciate the fact that um, if there's any farmers in that, you know, in that range that are using GPS, they'll be able to take advantage of that, that's great. Uh, any vehicles that happen to be passing down that road can take advantage of it. That's great. They won't drop the call or anything like that. My my question is, from the diagram you showed there, it appears that there's there's two houses in the lo in in the near location there. Can you tell me how many residents are within the two kilometer zone that would be able to take advantage of this? Uh, no, I'm sorry. I don't know how many households are within that two kilometer range, but we can certainly have that information available for you um, when we come back to the committee for approval. I would appreciate that, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Joan? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Tracy. The, um, you mentioned the nearest tower is seven kilometers away. Um, is that the tower in Onondaga that you're speaking of or another tower? I believe that Silo erected a tower in the village of Onondaga. Through you, Mr. Chair. So the closest tower is a Rogers Tower. It's located on concession four um, to the southwest. So it's on lot 36, concession four. I don't have the address. Of Brant County? Or Haldeman. I'd have to confirm that information for you, and I can have that available at the next meeting as well. Okay, and and uh, the silo tower that was erected in Onondaga Village, I believe, was taken over by um, ExploraNet. Um, has that tower been taken into consideration? I 
I can have that information available for the next meeting as well. I'll confirm exactly which one you're referring to, and uh, I will I will review what providers are on that tower and how much coverage it's getting. Great, and then you'll have the NAV Canada information available for the next meeting as well. Yes, I will. Thank you. Okay, any other questions to Tracy? Seeing well, none. Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chair, I did have one more. I I missed, if I might, thank you. Um, the planner mentioned there was one home that was closer than the required um, distance. And you spoke about that home. Is that the home at 431 Baptist Church Road that we received a letter with red at the top of each page? Yes, I do believe that's the address of the property to the west. Okay, thank you very much. If there are no further questions to Tracy at this point, I would uh, open the meeting to the public. Alicia, do, do we have anybody from the public that wishes to speak? Uh, we do, Mr. Chairman. There is a Colleen and Matthew Kelly who are here to speak on this issue. Okay, thank you. Are they, they're online? Yes, I am. Yeah, Colleen, and, and was it, sorry, your, your husband's name was? Uh, Matthew, I'm, I'm afraid he was in the hospital today, so he's unable to make this meeting, um, but I'm here to speak on behalf of both of us. Okay, so over to you then, uh, Colleen. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, councillors, I really want to take the time to thank you for listening uh, to me tonight. I really relish the fact that I can be involved in this process. We've lived here for 18 years and we truly value the fact that we live in a rural area. Um, I do have a very short prepared statement, but I did want to answer or at least speak to a couple of the points that Tracy mentioned. Um, one of them is the fact that we are within that safety protocol um, distance that is very concerning to us. The other thing I wanted to mention was that um, it is said that we have only three windows facing the tower. Ironically, the neighbor, who are wonderful people, actually won't see the tower whatsoever from their home. Uh, they have no windows that view the space that is being designated for the tower, and the infringement would be totally upon our property and not their own. That is definitely discouraging um, to us because we know that there were eight properties that were approached for this project. Um, she also mentions that we live along the hydro corridor, which we do. Um, however, it is significantly further away um, than what this proposed tower would be. So it, it's certainly not blending in with the area as seemed to be indicated. Um, I don't want you to feel that we are opposed to the infrastructure needs of the county. We certainly have lived in a rural area for a long time and we know what it's like. I also work from home um, full time. So I, I know that, you know, the internet can be slow sometimes. Uh, cell phones can lose signals. It does concern me that we are trying to give better cell service to people with phones in their cars because that to me seems like a bit of a safety issue. We really don't want people driving and speaking on their cell phones or texting at the same time. Um, but I just, I, I did wanna to speak to those things because they, they did bring up a few points that I hadn't considered before after Tracy spoke. Um, but I, I, can I assume that you've all had a chance to review the documentation that we put forward? It was a five page document with the red header you can assume that, Colleen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bell. So again, I just want to reiterate, we are certainly not opposed to infrastructure, um, but we do have a number of concerns that would affect us, but also our neighbors. We feel that there's definitely better areas and more suitable spaces for this type of, of installation. With regards to, I believe it was um, Mr. Pierce who mentioned the area coverage, because the, our density is not great in an area with rural homes, 
you know, two kilometers might be 20 houses, if that. It's, it, it would be a very small portion of people. In fact, we did a mailing out to our neighbors and we just drove around dropping off flyers and for information purposes in our um, neighbor's mailboxes because we were told that only 500 meters within the site selection would be notified. And even we did a three and a half kilometers and even that wasn't 80 homes. So it seems like an awfully big project to help so few homeowners. Um, but anyway, back to our four main concerns. Our biggest concern, as you saw in our documentation is our home is part of our investment portfolio. We spoke to a number of real estate agents who their first reaction was get a lawyer, but obviously that's not what we want to do. But it was more the concern that we would have so few people interested in a rural home that had a cell tower adjacent to the property that we would probably lose about 20% of the value of our home. Not to mention the loss of enjoyment of our property as well as the privacy due to the cameras that I'm sure will be installed along that, uh, among that tower area. We do have environmental concerns. I know that Tracy in her presentation was able to say that there are no environmental concerns, no health concerns, but I can just as easily prepare reports that show that there are health concerns, that doctors are now changing their minds about that information. Um, it's still very new technology. And, you know, I don't really necessarily feel that I would want to be a guinea pig in that sense. Um, we also do have a concern, not only the close proximity to our own home, but it being so close to our neighbor's home, it's very possible that people's health could be at stake. But probably the biggest environmental concern is the water displacement. I believe there were pictures on the last page of our proposal that showed some of the water displacement issues. We have lost a number of trees that border our property because of this issue. It was actually a tree planting project that we had done with the County of Brant when we first moved out here. But you should see the pictures that we have from just the storm that we had yesterday. You could probably float a small boat through the area with the amount of water. And it's fine to say that there will be regrading and another test done, but that water has to go somewhere. And more than likely, it's going to end up in our property, in our orchard, and take away an even larger section that we could enjoy. Do you have any questions for me? I know I will, ha I will have another opportunity to speak at a later date. Um, and like I say, I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I know you're very busy, but I was just curious if there were any other questions. Does committee have any questions of clarification from what Colleen has shared with us? Seeing none, Colleen, thank you. I'll, I will ask uh, Tracy to respond to your specific questions before we bring the matter back to committee. Uh, Tracy, would you like to respond to any specific questions from Colleen? Thank you, Srini, Mr. Chair. Um, many of the concerns uh, we did hear during the Public Information Center, and uh, I did include them in my presentation. So I'd be happy to provide more detailed response uh, with the, um, the letter of concurrence that we're going to submit to you for your next public meeting. And uh, I, I'll be able to provide you with some more, more details. So there was nothing new that has been brought up uh, tonight that I wasn't aware of. Okay, and there's nothing that you haven't already answered, Colleen, uh, at the public engagement session? That is correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, at that point, then I'll draw the public uh, meeting to a close on this item and ask... Oh, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Mr. Bell, could I just ask, say one more thing in closing? Of course. The last thing I would like to say to you as a council and to you as well, Mr. Mayor, is please consider how you would feel if this was being built next to your property. <laughs> Colleen, thank you for that thought. Uh, it is something that we always think about as, as councillors, um, but we do try to make decisions on the, in the best interests of the total community. So thank you for your input, Colleen. I'm going to pass them the uh, question back to the committee and ask them how they would like to decide on this matter. 
Matt Bailey? Just to receive yeah. it as information. Thank you. Do we have a second for that? Seconded by Councillor Coleman. Any further comments? Seeing none, all the, you have a comment, Joan? No. All those in favor? Thank you. This matter will then go to back to staff and we will see a uh, recommendation coming at a future meeting. Thank you, Colleen. Tracy, I think you're gonna stay with us for the next item. So uh, the next item then is uh, 7.2, Albert Judge Drive, uh, similar um, proposal and Dan, you'll take it from here. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a second telecommunication tower application, this time for property located at one Albert Judge Drive. And again, this is uh, this item is being received and present, presented for information purposes only. So this site is located in Burford uh, on Albert Judge Drive, south of Bryan Drive. And the uh, subject lands are highlighted in blue and have an area of approximately 1.4 hectares. The uh, surrounding land uses include urban residential in yellow, natural heritage in green, and the employment lands in blue. And the current designation as shown on the screen there is employment lands in blue. The current zoning on the property is heavy industrial M3. Surrounding land uses include uh, M3, uh, he also heavy industrial, uh, natural heritage in green, open space, and suburban residential uh, within that urban, res uh, urban residential designation to the north. The proposal is to establish a 50 meter tall steel self-supporting lightning protected telecommunication structure situated in a nine by 16 compound area surrounded by the chain link security fence. Uh, similar to the previous application, a detailed site selection report and a site plan were provided. Uh, a public information session was held uh, last Thursday again on December 2nd where um, just for some preliminary notes is that the, the proposed tower is located greater than 150 uh, meters from the surrounding residential land uses and the proposed tower is located outside of the natural heritage or GRCA regulated area. Um, similar to the previous presentation, uh, the dots in yellow identify the locations of residential dwellings. The um, site location is in blue. The 120 dashed line or dashed circle identifies the preferred setback from natural heritage features. And the 150 solid circle identifies the, um, the three times the proposed uh, tower height. Uh, is which is the preferred distance from any surrounding sensitive land uses, in this case, the residential uses to the north. So in terms of next steps, uh, again, receiving comments, uh, we will work with the applicant to address any concerns. At this point, uh, Tracy will confirm there were no residents uh, in attendance to, with interest of this application. Uh, we'll prepare a formal staff report for a future uh, public hearing. Further notice will be provided to the public and we will be uh, returned to the Planning and Development Committee with the recommendation meeting. Happy to take any questions. Thank you, Dan. Just bring us all back on the big screen. Uh, does the committee have any questions to Dan? Seeing none, we'll move on and uh, offer the opportunity to uh, Tracy as the agent of the applicant uh, to present. Bear in mind, Tracy, that we've we've heard a lot of the general stuff, so you can keep it specific on this time. Yes, thank you very much, uh, and I definitely will not uh, repeat uh, what I did uh, before. Uh, just focusing on what's unique about this application. So this one's a little shorter; it's fifty meters tall. Um, it has the uh, same uh, lattice uh, style. Um, the compound air area is nine by 16 meters, um, which is a little bit more irregular shape, but uh, we wanted to blend in behind the existing Quonset hut. Um, so again, we're using an existing driveway. No new driveway is being proposed. 
uh, the least area, we've tried to um, hide it essentially behind the Quonset uh, building, um, as we know that there is residential above Bryan Drive. Uh, so we tried to do as much effort. Um, and again, we're always looking for feedback as well, whether there's additional landscaping or if the, how the tower height should be changed at all. Um, we are always looking for those feedbacks. So again, using the arrow photo, we've got some residents to the north and uh, one to the uh, east. And then this is the location where uh, the proposed tower will be. And it's an existing industrial building. That's a zoomed in area of where the uh, lease space is. Um, and again, as you see with the local nearby towers, um, Burford is, is in an area where there aren't a lot of towers. There is one nearby tower. It's um, in the red. It's actually a um, bell tower, but it's really short. It's only 38 meters in height. And it's, it's just too short to get um, any type of coverage that would benefit the area in any way. Again, uh, looking at who uses this tower, as you see, there aren't even a lot of cars that are picking up any service in this area or residents um, at, or, or any even uh, the industrial users um, because again, um, of the, the lack of coverage in this area. So uh, again, through your protocol, you require us to do some photo simulations. We've taken two views. One view from the residential area so that we could see what um, Coach Drive residents would see from their uh, yards. And we've taken one uh, onto the east side uh, view too. So this is what uh, it would look like standing on that cul-de-sac on Coach Drive looking directly south. Um, that would be the closest uh, kind of the backyard for where we could stand. Uh, and then the tower you can see is popping up behind the trees. And then the second view, again, steaming um, corner of Bryan Drive and Potter Drive looking west. Um, and then there's the existing industrial building. You can see um, the tower uh, over onto the back part of that. Again, the lattice allows the, the sky to um, go through, to kind of faint, give it a faint look. And it looks more like a hydro wire or hydro tower. Uh, again, looking through your protocol, uh, only a unique item here is, is, again, we're staying outside of the natural heritage feature and we are outside that ring of 150 meters in diameter. There are no residents within three times height of the tower. Uh, the closest resident actually is, um, in addition to the ones to the north, uh, we did pick up one at 178 meters uh, to the east of the site. And um, again, this followed the exact same process as the other tower. We had um, the same notification, the same open house night, and no one attended the open house um, and uh, no comments have been received from this. And then tonight is a public meeting. So I will stop sharing. Thank you, Tracy. And happy Thank to you. answer any questions. Does committee have any questions to Tracy? Seeing none, I'll then move on to the public. Alicia, do we have anybody online from the public that wishes to speak? I do not have anyone registered to speak on this item. Okay, so I'll ask a second time if there's anybody who would like to speak from the public. And a third time, I'll close the public part of this uh, item and pass the matter back to committee and ask how committee would wish to deal with this item. Councillor Miller, you? I'll move to receive, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Pierce. Any further commentary? Questions? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favour? Thank you. So this matter will be brought back to staff and will be referred back to this committee at, at some future date. Tracy, thank you for your input this evening. And good night. Okay, moving on to item 7.3. Uh, this is 64 Brunt Road. Uh, in this case, it is a recommendation uh, that the county clerk direct uh, Forbes Brothers that we are supported. So I'm gonna hand that over to Kayla. Thank you. And can you just confirm you can see my screen? I can. We can. Yes. Okay. 
Great, thanks very much. Um, so this is a communication tower uh, presentation as well uh, for this evening. Uh, the location is 64 Brant Road and the applicant is For Forbes Brothers um, on behalf of ExploreNet Communications. And the presentation tonight um, is for recommendation. The subject lands are located on the east side of Grant Road and the proposed tower facility would be located approximately 1.2 kilometers north of Governor's Road East and Brant Road intersection. The tower is proposed to be located on the west side of the subject property. ExploreNet um, is proposing a 45 meter tall self-support style structure uh, within a 15 by 15 meter leased area on the subject lands. And I just wanted to note that the municipality is not the approval authority uh, for communication towers, but rather applicants must seek concurrence from the local municipality and follow the established protocol set out for consultation. The applicants are uh, seeking tonight council to adopt the above noted resolution um, where the municipality acknowledges that the proponent has adhered to the requirements of the County of Brant municipal land use consultation process. The proposed tower will be located entirely within the agricultural designation and zone. And planning staff are satisfied that from a land use perspective, the tower is proposed in an appropriate location. A public notice sign was posted by planning staff on the subject lands on August 31st. And notice of the public meeting was advertised in the Brantford Expositor as per the protocol on September 8th of 2021. No members of the public have registered for that meeting and no public feedback has been received in regards to this application. In summary, the proposal has merit and is consistent with provincial policy and does not conflict with the official plan or the council approved telecommunications tower protocol. Therefore, it is my opinion that the recommendation be endorsed by the committee. That concludes my presentation and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Kayla, if you could switch us back to the full screen. Thank you. Um, does committee have any questions for Kayla? Seeing none, thank you, Kayla. We'll then ask if the applicant or the agent of the applicant would like to present. Good, uh, good evening. Could you, just introduce, uh, yep. could you good, just introduce yourself to us? Good, good evening. Uh, my name is Cyrus Gassabay. I'm with Forbes and uh, ExploreNet Communications. Uh, I don't have a presentation. I think Ky Kyla did a fantastic job. Thank you. Um, I'm just here if there's any questions. Okay. Thank you very much, Cyrus. So any questions to Cyrus? Seeing none, if you just hang on in case uh, something does come up from the public. Uh, we'll then move on to the public section of this item. Alicia, do we have anybody on the line from the public that wishes to speak? I do not have anyone registered online to speak on this item. Okay, thank you. Then I'll just, for the sake of clarity, ask a second time if anybody's on the line that wishes to speak from the public. And a third time, hearing none, then I will pass the matter back to committee for a decision. Mayor Bailey. Be approved, please. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Mark Leferrier, thank you. Any questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favour? Matter is approved. Thank you, Cyrus. Thank you, Kayla. Thank you. Uh, thank you, everybody. Have a great evening. So that ends the section on uh, public hearings under the telecommunication tower protocol. We'll move to item eight, which is public hearings under the Planning Act to receive information from the public. And we have six items, the first of which is in regard of Six Maple Avenue. And I think Amanda, you're going to lead us through this one. Uh, that is correct. Can you just confirm you can see my screen? We can, thank you. Awesome, all right. So thank you through the chair. An application for rezoning has been received from MHVC planning for the lands municipally known as Six Maple Avenue North in Burford. The subject lands are located on the east side of Maple Avenue North, north of the Maple Avenue and King, King Street intersection within Burford. The subject lands are rectangular in shape, has frontage along Maple Avenue, 
and has an area of approximately 1.7 hectares and are privately serviced. And then in regards to the proposal, the applicant is proposing to rezone the subject lands from suburban residential to residential multiple height density or RM3 to permit an apartment building as a permitted use. Specifically, the applicant is proposing two low rise apartment buildings that are three stories in height and 40 units in each for a total of 80 units on the subject lands and are proposing a total of 160 parking spaces. Since the December 2020 information meeting, the proposal has been revised to address concerns relating to traffic, servicing, and impact on the surrounding properties. And then through the rezoning, the applicant is proposing a holding provision that speaks to MECP approval for their servicing, stormwater approval to ensure there is minimal impact to the surrounding properties, a well permit to ensure surrounding wells are not impacted, and a phase approach to address traffic and to align with the outcome of the Burford servicing EA. And in regards to a little uh, chronology, uh, the original rezoning application was received in October 2020 with an information presentation in December 2020. The applicants also held a virtual open house in April 2021. And then since the initial information meeting in open house, uh, the rezoning has been revised and staff felt it, was, felt it was appropriate to hold another information meeting as the proposed rezoning has changed. Uh, furthermore, staff have required that an additional neighborhood mail out be prepared with information on the revised rezoning proposal and be mailed ahead of the tentative February 2022 uh, recommendation meeting. And then in regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as urban residential, which contemplates for residential development, such as apartment buildings. The subject lands are also located within the secondary urban settlement area of Burford. The official plan also contemplates for de development on private servicing and permits a maximum density of 50 units per hectare. And then in regards to the zoning bylaw, the subject lands are currently zoned as suburban residential. The applicant is proposing a rezoning to residential multiple high density to, to permit the two three-story apartment buildings. And as previously mentioned, the applicant is also proposing a holding provision that specifically speaks to MECP approval, stormwater approval, well permit, and a phased approach. The proposed concept plan demonstrated compliance with the development provisions for apartment buildings, and I do note the proposal is subject to site plan control. And then in regards to next steps, a detailed review of the application is to be completed, and a tentative recommendation report is scheduled for February 2020, or sorry, February 2022, with additional notices to be mailed. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, one, just one question to help everybody understand, you said this, the, this is a, the applicant has changed the zoning uh, bylaw amendment requirement. Could you be more specific about what's changed yeah, before we get into questions? So the main difference between the original and this one is that a holding provision is now proposed. And then through that holding provision, they are proposing um, certain, for lack of better terms, like a checklist. So they would need to get MECP approval, the well permit, um, and then they would also need to address, um, um, sorry, what was the other ones? Um, so they would need the MECP approval for their servicing, stormwater approval, um, and a well permit, and where they're also proposing a phased approach to reflect or dependent on the outcome of the Burford EA. Thank you, Amanda. Questions to Amanda. I think, Steve, you had your hand up. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so just wanted to touch on the, the part where you were, you were discussing, discussing how the current official plan references um, allowing medium density uses up to a maximum of 50 units per hectare. And, and I just wanted to clarify, and, and, and for anyone who's watching, and I know that there's people interested in this, um, this the calculation for this proposal is 47.8 units per hectare, is that clear? And, and could you just t discuss that a little bit further, please? Uh, thank you, Sue, the chair, that's correct. The official plan does permit uh, a density of up to 50 units per hectare. Um, it's my understanding they're proposing approximately 47.8 unit per hectares. So the way that's calculated is we just take the number of units, so in this situation would be 80, and then divided by the net hectare area of the subject lands, which is approximately 1.7. Right. And the and the and just to confirm the the 50 units per hectare, which I know is something that we've been discussing in the new official plan for other parts of the county. Um, but but the 50 units per hectare is that's not a new 
conversation for this part of the county that's that that's been in the official plan since 2012 correct that's correct thank you thank you joe thank you um mr chairman through you to amanda the um um it, it mentions that medium density is accepted, but this is a proposal for high density. Um, um, thank you through the chair. So it's my interpretation that this proposal would be um, a medium density use potential. And I'll confirm this in my upcoming recommendation report. I do not believe it is a high density use based on the definitions and the policies within our official plan but our official plan does contemplate for low density, medium density, and high density residential uses on lands designated as urban residential. So thank you for that. And just to follow up, you mentioned for the um, holding provision that's being proposed that approvals would be sought through the ministry um, for stormwater servicing, wells for um, sewage. Did you mention sewage? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. So this property currently is privately serviced. So it is privately serviced for well water and for sewage as well. So they would need to get two separate approvals for those two separate items in, in order to lift the holding on the property. From the ministry? Correct. Yeah. And um, has there been any other project of this magnitude in the county where no servicing is available? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in my experience, I'm not aware of any, but in my upcoming report, I can confirm that for you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, John. John, John Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to, to Amanda. Um, can you just confirm for me, Amanda, like we're talking 80 units here and we've got, uh, if I counted it right, I'm counting 116 parking spots. Can you just give me uh, what's mandated as far as parking spots per unit? Let me just pull that up. Um, I can confirm, sorry, through the chair, I can confirm they are meeting the minimum required parking spaces. Um, the 160 does include um, accessible parking spaces and the visitor parking spaces. Um, and then in terms of the units, um, let me just, I don't have that exact number up in front of me. Right. So again, if I counted the, the tenant parking spots, it was 116, like 116. Mm -hmm. And there's 80 units. Yeah. Um, right? so that's only 36 extra parking spots for potentially two cars per unit, right? Um, thank you to the chair. It's, I can confirm that in my upcoming um, staff report, but it is my understanding they are meeting the minimum parking requirements in terms of per unit and then in terms of a uh, visitor and accessible parking spaces as well, but I can confirm that for you. Thanks, Amanda. Any other questions to Amanda? Seeing none, thank you, Amanda. Um, we'll move then on to the applicant or the agent of the applicant who is going to present Alicia. We do have Dave Aston online. Dave, good evening. Dave, over to you. All right, good. Thank you. And uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak this evening. I'm just trying to get my presentation here. Um, can everyone see that OK? Yes, we can. Yeah. Great. Um, and I just wanted to first start by thanking Amanda for her presentation. I know there's. Uh, uh, been Amanda and we've been having numerous discussions with county staff over uh, the last uh, year as it relates to the proposal and specifically the uh, proposed private servicing and uh, the work that's ongoing as it relates to the class environmental assessment for servicing. So the purpose tonight uh, to come back to uh, for council for information is to really address the change associated with the zoning from, from a phasing perspective. Um, 
And that's important in context of how we move forward uh, with consideration of the application in context of the holding provision. So the I, the intent of the holding provision here is to provide for the first phase or the 40 units to proceed uh, with the proposed private servicing and then a second phase based on uh, the potential for uh, municipal servicing. And uh, we talked quite a bit with staff about the use of the holding provision in the phasing um, and the EA process. So uh, we fully recognize that there'll be additional details associated with site design uh, in context of stormwater, uh, the, the water and the wastewater system or the sanitary, private sanitary system. But to this point, um, our project team and experts uh, have worked through the details and the comments associated with um, the proposal for the private system uh, to conclude that we uh, could move forward with consideration on a phased approach as proposed here this evening. So I just wanted to give some background there because there has been a lot of work and, and we appreciate the work that the county's um, been doing as well in reviewing documents and uh, the discussions that we've had over time. Um, just, uh, um, Amanda covered the background uh, that we've worked through. And again, you can see we've been working through this uh, uh, over a couple of years and the application has evolved over time uh, and reduced the number of units to ensure that we were working with the, within context of the official plan. As, we've, as we had the uh, neighborhood meeting, uh, there was questions about the change of the number of units. And as I mentioned, we uh, looked to the official plan for direction. Uh, housing tenure and affordability. Uh, the, the intent here isn't to create affordable housing. Uh, the intent is to provide housing choice uh, that would uh, be uh, attainable to a wide range of, uh, of existing and future residents in the county. Uh, we're looking at the 80 units. Um, again, could be 160 residents based on uh, general average associated with uh, uh, people per unit. Uh, water servicing and impact on wells. There's been uh, work done, documentation of, uh, of that uh, uh, technical analysis on, on the water and the uh, surrounding wells. And that information has been provided to the county for review. I believe was also peer reviewed. Uh, along with the wastewater servicing system type and the outlet. We talked quite a bit about the Burford Master Servicing Environmental Assessment and how that will play into not just development on these lands and phasing, but uh, really consideration uh, for the broader Burford area to provide water and sanitary services to the community. Again, that there's there's no conclusion there yet. That study is ongoing. And then there are a number of comments related to uh, what I would call site plan details and those that we would address through a site plan process. And typically, uh, county staff would also look for these to be addressed as it relates to uh, screening um, of properties, privacy fencing, uh, lighting, landscaping and design considerations. Uh, with regard to parking, we are meeting the, uh, the approach to the county's parking requirement from uh, a unit count to parking ratio. I, I don't have that in front of me either, uh, but I know that we have worked to provide for that uh, parking requirement. And uh, I spoke about the uh, phased approach. So there's two phases. The first phase is the 40 unit, three story building. Uh, all of the entire development has access to Maple Avenue, the private services and uh, provision of 160 parking spaces. 
And this is the conceptual site plan, which you've seen. And, and I wanted to just uh, pick up on what uh, Amanda had mentioned with regard to the official plan, because I think uh, uh, there was a comment about, well, the official plan allows medium density and we're within the range of the density permitted of the official plan of 50 units per hectare, but the zoning bylaw is asking for high density. And so that really is just a function of how the county zoning bylaw is written. We're applying the RM3 zone, which calls that type of development. Uh, it uses the terms high density. Um, so we are proposing a three-story uh, building uh, and meeting the density requirements of the official plan. In my opinion, opinion, the terminology of the bylaw may be creating some confusion as to the intensity or the scale of development. And we can work with county staff in, in drafting the bylaw to ensure that uh, what is put into the bylaw reflects what is being proposed. For example, establishing uh, the maximum building heights in the bylaw so that it's not given what the typical RM3 zone might be, which might be higher. So we'll, we will work with county staff to reflect the proposal uh, in the specific bylaw. Uh, and I believe we've shared uh, the conceptual design here for the project. Uh, you can see the three-story design with the pitched roof. And as I mentioned, there's been a number of studies completed and submitted uh, comments received and uh, responses provided to the comments throughout the process. Uh, so we, in our opinion, we have an application with the appropriate zoning and uh, phasing requirements and holding provisions in place uh, that can be supported by uh, provincial and county policy direction. And I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, this evening as well. Okay, hey, thank you. Questions from the committee to Dave. John Pierce first. Thank you, Mr. Chair, through you to Dave. Um, quick question in regards to, I'm gonna swing back to parking here, Dave. <clears throat> so what I'm, what I'm think I heard you say there is even when the first unit is built, all the parking will be available. First, is that a fair statement? Uh, that's, what, that's what the presentation was saying. Yes, I think, um, that is an option that we can build all that parking um, in the first phase. Okay, no, I appreciate that. Um, now this is just, a, and, and I know things aren't finalized here, but I'm curious. So you've got the barrier free parking there. It uh, looks as though there's six spots. And then it looks as though kind of on the, the if you want to call it the inside cul-de-sac, there's eight spots there, which I'm assuming is going to be for tenants because it doesn't have the visitors in it. I'm curious as to why you wouldn't put the barrier free parking up closer to the entrances of the building and move those other spots back. I know that can be all done in the future, but that's just, just an observation. Yeah, uh, to you, Mr. Chair, it, that's a good point. And I think we'll look at that. And it could have just been an evolution of the plan where we had looked at adding uh, some additional space there and we didn't pick up putting the barrier free in those locations. And uh, I think we'll, we will take a look at that in context of kind of a grade perspective and best accessibility. If those are the best accessible spaces, I think we'll put them there. Um, and uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. I, it's either that or visitor parking, um, but if, you know, as you were, <laughs> asking the question uh, I was thinking that as well because then you know the visitors are coming in and out more regularly but I, I appreciate the comment on on the accessible parking I think that's a good idea okay other than that thank you very much thank you any other questions to Dave Dave Miller okay thank you Mr. Chair uh, through to the presenter um has there been any low impact design uh, incorporated into the uh, site? I'm looking at that parking lot at the back. It's a lot of uh, a lot of tarvy, a lot of pavement. Um, 
And I'm just wondering if uh, you guys have given thought to, to low impact development, because as you know, everybody's on wells and uh, recharging them might, uh, might not be a bad idea. So any thoughts to low impact development? Uh, through Mr. Chair, uh, we, we have given some thought to low impact development. I'm not sure uh, what exactly we're recommending. I can provide some further information on that, but the central, what I call would call the central green space, what we've tried to do is incorporate that stormwater management as, as a feature, um, as part of the design. Uh, and to try and minimize impact in that regard. But it, I think we can take a look at uh, other opportunities um, uh, for low impact development. It may not necessarily um, reflect on the plan accordingly, kind of conceptually at this point. I think that's something we can look at because we will uh, essentially have to meet any uh, pre and post uh, targets associated with uh, infiltration and, uh, uh, and, and those types of details through the stormwater management design in any event. So uh, those will be details we'll have to address. Um, next question is um, the hydro geo report. Is it, have you guys just had one done thus far? And I'm asking because the one I uh, read the county's peer review paper on the hydro geo report, and there was a there was a significant number of deficiencies in the hydro geo report, which I was kind of surprised at because um, given that it's intended for sep uh, private services, non non municipal, um, I would have uh, thought that would have been the focus or <laughs> had a lot more focus, I guess, on it. So it was it just on one hydro geo report. That's fine. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, my understanding is it's there was the original report and then uh, uh, responses provided to um, to the county. Okay. So it may not be a full se second report, but there would have been responses provided. Okay. Um, in the 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 design you're showing us today, that's the exact same one you showed us before, where the one unit was completely shading the neighbor's house to the north. Is that correct? It's the exact same as before. Uh, it, the, the design is the same. I'm not sure about the shadow impacts with the with the three story building, but we can we can uh, make sure we take a look at that as from a shadow impact perspective. Yeah, if you could, Dave, because it's only been mentioned every single time we've seen the presentation and it's been brought up. So I would kind of hope you guys would have looked at it before maybe tonight. Um, next question: the housing type that you're looking at, where's how where's the closest type? If, if, you, if you went to downtown Burford, where would you find the next closest type of this high density? Because you mentioned uh, Amanda didn't think there was one, another similar one in the county. So, but from this site, where would be the, where would we travel in Ontario to find one that this high density on, on private services? Any ideas? You, you must have seen something because you get, you're a planner. You, you don't just deal with the rent county. Yeah, I, I, I can. Uh, provide specific uh, uh, locations where where uh, this type of development on private services. Um, if that's a specific question on this type of development, uh, I think it wouldn't, uh, from a density perspective, it's not hard to point out, but I think you're looking for a specific reference to uh, one where it's on uh, private services. So um, that's... Yes. Because I'd like to we see can it. provide information. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I would like to see it. That that's why I'm asking. So okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, David. Any additional questions for David? Robert, go ahead. Uh, thanks, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to uh, Dave. Uh, I, I'm I'm just uh, thinking to myself that sometimes we can get lost in the the technical jargon and and the uh, the planneries or whatever you want to call it, uh, it, it becomes very confusing talking about holding provisions and density required, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I, I, I'm just trying to simplify it a little bit and I'm gonna ask you to um, address what I'll call some neighborhood compatibility issues. Uh, you've probably seen a lot of the emails and, and uh, 
fielded a lot of uh, comments and you're probably going to hear a lot more tonight. So I'm, I'm, I'd like you to just kind of address some of the uh, neighborhood combatability issues that have been brought forward, not only through the emails and correspondence, but perhaps through the... Uh, uh, oh yeah, Chambers is on now. Miller was just on, it's on, on this uh, subject. Excuse me, uh, whoever has diagnostics iPad J, could you please mute? iPad John Morse, thank you. Go ahead, Robert. I, I, I think I've asked my question. I, I hope Dave uh, caught that. <laughs> uh, take, take a few minutes and just uh, express uh, some uh, what uh, you uh, consider some neighborhood compatibility issues and how you attempt to address those. Sure. Uh, through Mr. Chair, sorry, Councillor LaFerrier, was that a, a question or is that to ask next question? I saw your hand next, up. So, next uh, in two, yeah. Okay. Councillor Chair Bell will take care of it. Thank you. I wasn't I wasn't sure if it was about the technology part, so my, my apologies. Um, uh, Councillor Chambers, I, I have read the comments um, and I, I have seen uh compatibility raised i think as i mentioned in my presentation i think there was a there's might be some confusion on uh what the proposed zoning um uh request is because it's requesting high density uh so i think that may be creating some confusion uh what's being proposed from a three-story structure um is uh you know in my opinion uh something that it, that is compatible within the neighborhood as far as a scale of development um the approach to the design to kind of have two buildings with uh, the ends uh fronting onto maple ave and and i'll acknowledge him maybe we could do some better work on how those ends look fronting onto maple ave but the idea was to create uh, kind of th the streetscape that there's uh, two structures and a driveway with landscaping in between rather than, you know, a large wall of a building along Maple Ave. Uh, we look to, you know, put the parking to the rear of the site and to minimize the impact of that. And as you drive into the site, there'll be a large landscaped area um councillor miller raised the shadow impact and we'll, we will undertake that analysis and make sure that uh, there's no off-site shadow impact um, but i think the proposed scale of development um, is compatible with the broader area uh, the the terminology used i i believe is creating the confusion and uh, I also believe that what we're proposing from a housing type is also going to provide uh, some different housing choice uh, in the community um, and really support uh, um, people having the opportunity to re remain in uh, the community of Burford. So those are kind of my thoughts, my opinions on on how we're addressing neighborhood character and compatibility. Robert, would you like to ask any of the questions? I, I, Mr. Chairman, I'll uh, allow the uh, public to make their comments. Okay, thank you. Mark, you're next. Thank you, Chair Bell. Um, through you to Dave Ashton, uh, Aston. Um, this is something we, we get a lot of requests for housing like this in, in Paris and other parts of the county, and I know We've had councillors talk about the need for different types of housing for people who want to downsize and stay in the community. Um, and this, this seems to, to be helpful in that regard. Um, my question, I don't, I don't expect you to be able to answer it today because it's it involves some research, but when, when you're looking at the examples that Councillor Miller's asked for when this comes back to council, I wonder if you may be able to also provide some input on the economic impact of those types of developments on the downtowns they're adjacent to. Um, I know that there's been some uh, tough times with COVID, et cetera, for some businesses locally, including in, in Burford uh, downtown. And I'm wondering what this kind of 
um, foot traffic and, and uh, you know, walkable residential um, may do for that kind of um, those, those types of businesses, just so we get a, all the information before decisions made uh, about the economic impact, if you can. That's my question. Okay, uh, through, uh, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, um, we, I will see what we can dig up. I'll try to be, uh, see if there's something specific to what I, what I would call towns, because my answer really would be straightforward from a city building perspective. And that is, uh, if you have downtowns, you want people in your downtowns because they're going to support your downtown. And I think it's probably very much the same uh, that you would say in Paris. Uh, you, you would encourage people to be in the downtown or in proximity to the downtown to be able to support the downtown. So uh, I'll see if there's something that might be out there on kind of more of a, a, a Burford scale. Um, and do my best to, uh, uh, to to come up with something. But I, I think the gen my general opinion would be um, uh, where there's people supporting stores and shops, the more people, uh, the better. Any additional questions for Dave at this point? Joan, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you to... Um... And Mr. Ashton, um, the um, phased approach, you spoke about 40 units, the first 40 units being um, constructed on private servicing. And of course you would need permission for whatever type of servicing is planned from the ministry, MEPC or CP. They change it so often I can't keep track. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you would need permission from them before you could do that. Uh, what would be the company's projected timeline if they got that permission for the first phase to build? Uh, through Mr. Chair, I, I would suggest that, that the company is excited about moving forward with the opportunity a realistic um, and I'll go just based on timelines, uh, should the zoning be approved, uh, uh, which I know is a council decision, but following uh, any zoning approval, um, there would still need to be the ministry approvals and site plan approvals. So potentially, you know, it, it, it could be a year, uh, maybe two years before anything starts happening on the ground and uh, you know to to within those two to three years uh, something being seen from a construction perspective on the site thank you and and um, you mentioned that the hydrogeological um, concerns were addressed um, were we given a copy of those responses? Uh, th through you, Mr. Chair, if, if I said they were addressed, uh, I, I would, my intent wasn't to say they're addressed. My intent was to suggest, I think Councillor Miller had asked, there was a report done. Mm -hmm. uh, there were county comments provided and uh, we had provided responses uh, to those and uh, okay. that those would, would need to be addressed. Okay, could we have copies of those responses through you, Mr. Chair, to Mr. Aston? I'm not sure if he has to supply them to us or staff. Joan, I'll, I'm sure staff can, can arrange that either through Dave or directly. Do you have any other questions, Joan? No, that's all, thank you. Uh, seeing no other questions at this point, I'm going to open the meeting to the public and Alicia, I think we may have a number of people wishing to speak. Would you schedule them for me, please? We do, Mr. Chairman. The first one is Michael Robinette. Michael, are you online? Hello. Can you hear me? We yeah. can hear you, Michael. Yeah, go I ahead. I guess I don't see a picture there. Uh, yeah. Wow. Michael, Where do you... I start? Michael, Where do I start? 
Michael, start by giving us your, your address, please. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm the neighbor to the north in the shadow uh, of this structure, uh, 10 Maple uh, Avenue North. And um, this is really a problematic situation. Um, I uh, simply must say, this is not right. This is not the appropriate uh, use of this site. Uh, this Lanka proposal, they're trying to squeeze in uh, a development that is so inappropriate for that property. I circulated a petition last June and I personally went through the neighborhood and I saw, I, I spoke to all many residents and overwhelmingly 99% of the people I approached are opposed to the Lanka plan. This is a slippery slope uh, of development that has no uh, business being squeezed into that property. I would like uh, uh, Alicia, if she could put map A on the, the screen. This is map B, that was my second uh, graphic. If she could, uh, no, that's the C, uh, map A. Keep you, there, there we go. Now, there is a map of uh, Burford. In red is a neighborhood very close to it with Messaker, William. You can see the names of the streets. You can see where Six Maple is. Six Maple uh, is much smaller than that area. That area in red has 74 homes in it. They want to put 80 homes in on Six Maple. Oh, totally uh, out, of, out of whack. Uh, it, it doesn't blend in with the neighborhood. All that neighborhood is single family homes and they want to put in 80 units. Who's going to live in there? We're going to, we can't control who's going to buy those units. If we look at Paris, if we look at a lot of new development, a lot of multi-generational uh, families are living in homes. They, a lot of those homes are gonna have more than two people. They're conning on two people per unit. And it's not gonna be two people per unit. They're gonna have 30 or 300 to 400 people living in that complex. And they're gonna be tapping into our groundwater. They're gonna be putting their wastewater in there. That they're, we're gonna have that massive Walmart parking lot for Burford at the back. There's gonna be lighting there. They're taking out the bush at the back. Let's have map number uh, B. Map B, please. They wanna take, no, that's C, I want B. The, the, there's the forest. They're gonna take that away. The people. Hello. People on the street behind it, those are all the bedrooms. This is what's going to happen with this parking lot that they're here. Uh, this uh, particular uh, plan that I have here, this is a good example of infill. I went around the village of Burford just recently and I looked through the different uh, streets and I found some good examples of infill of nice homes that they're putting in. Uh, we have on King Street at 166 King, right near the corner of Potter Drive and King, the, high, the main highway, there was a beautiful home that was put in there. That was infill. That's appropriate use. This property here should be infill of homes. This property actually was once part of a large farm that Jacob Miller operated in the early 1800s. I think that we should have a cul-de-sac put in there to ask for the access of probably about 10 homes, I think could fit there. I don't know the regulations of the county. Maybe we couldn't have that many, but this is more appropriate use. I wouldn't have this long structure next to my property putting us in shade, especially in the winter. We live in a century home. We don't have a lot of bright open windows. 
we're going to be in, in darkness most of the time. The value of our home is going to de be devalued. We are, we're retired. This is our main investment. And they're going to take this, put this long barrack, barracks next to us. I asked for the, I asked for the dimensions a year ago. Nobody's told me how long their buildings are going to be. I estimate maybe about 300 feet. It starts almost at the public sidewalk and it goes well past my property. And I'm going to have that next to me. Maybe it's going to be 50 feet high. Who wants that next to them? The owner of this property lives in Highland Estates. He wouldn't want that next to his house. It's not going to increase the value of his house if they put it in Highland Estates. Why are they fossing it on us here in Burford? That does not belong in Burford. There isn't anything else like that. There isn't anything else like that. You're asking questions. Where can you find an example on uh, private uh, services of something like this? And Dave Austin is searching. Oh, I don't know. I'll, I'll look into it. This, uh, I have, I know this project has so many things wrong with it. density. it. It has the wrong density. It's going to be three to 400 people when it's completed. And it's not appropriate for our neighborhood. 99% of the people I've spoken to are dead against it. Mike, I'm glad you're doing this. I'm glad you stepped forward to do this. Do I want to do this? No, I don't want to do this. I'm the main caregiver for my wife. She has Alzheimer's. I went around in June and I, I took time when I had my PSWs helping me, I was out walking the neighborhood and I was talking to people and I know the feeling and I know that they're against this. And, you, you know, young couples were saying, oh, Mike, we moved here a couple of years ago. We wanted to have the small town. We don't want this. This is a slippery slope. We're going to be like Paris. Paris used to be charming. It's lost all its charm. Maybe the little downtown is, uh, uh, shopping area isn't too bad, but look at all that sprawl. We have all these subdivisions, all this urban sprawl going up. Uh, all this urban sprawl going up and you know these houses are spreading, uh, they're, they're growing like weeds on steroids. I don't know how many people I've uh, talked to and they said, boy, what's happened to Paris? It's terrible. We don't want to have that in Burford. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm all wound up here, like sitting here for an hour, listening to all this, these presentations and all these pretty words. Now, I, I just think about the last federal election and the NDP leader talking about pretty words and all this sales pitch that they're trying to give. And they don't even believe their own words. I know they don't, they're just doing their job. My, Michael, they, sorry. We don't want that kind of thing. Michael, sorry to interrupt you. You have yeah. two, more, two more minutes of your allotted 10 minutes. Well, yeah, okay. Well, let's move on to uh, C, map C. Here, oh, no, map C, not D, map C. Here is another idea. I have ideas, I'm not against development. Here is uh, Nathan uh, Lancaster back in the June 8th issue of the Expositor said, oh, I, I lament the fact that my grandparents couldn't have any housing at West Side Village. Here is another example, similar to West Side Village. 30, maybe 34, uh, 35 units, two people per unit. The density would be far lower than anything that we have, uh, you, you know, with this, plan by Lanka. The Lanka plan is ludicrous. It doesn't fit Burford. It doesn't fit this neighborhood. It takes away the value of my property. And how do you control who buys this property? It could be somebody buying a few units and then renting it out. If I have renters and owners, then you have even worse. You have chaos. You know, it's not a good mix renting and having uh, having renters and owners and the same complex, that never works out. And this, now I have details of uh, how these units could, could be uh, set up. There's a senior center. Let's look at uh, map D. 
map D, please. Here is, are the units. Oh, there's map, oh, that's map E. Map D, there's nice units, one floor for seniors. This is seniors housing, not these high rises that these people want. That's not downsizing. That's, you know, if they're gonna pay five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars $600,000 to get an, a unit, that they need to have something like this. You have a, a garage. You I, at the front, number five. Michael, I'm going to ask if you. Oh would... no, please! I asked for an extension. I've listened to the uh, Dave Aston to go on for a lot longer than I. Michael, spoke. Michael, please. If somebody, if one of my colleague councillors wishes to offer an extension, I'm happy to accept that. Please okay. give us an extension, and you, you know I, I I have much more to say, and and you can see it's problematic. It my, definitely Michael, is problematic. Michael, I'm, I am going to cut you off. There's nobody making a, a case for you to for have more time. I would say we all have copies of these drawings, so we know exactly what you're talking about. I would like to thank you for your input. I'm going to ask if my uh, colleague councillors would like to ask you questions. I see David Miller would like to ask you a question. Well, Mr. Chair, I just wondered if uh, we could give Michael just two more minutes to wrap up because I know there was some, he, he blacked out for a bit and then we also had some trouble getting the slides in place. So maybe he could wrap it up in two minutes if, if, if you will indulge him. I'm asking. Oh, okay. Yeah. okay, I have, am I on now? <laughs> okay, I think, I think there is support. So please go ahead. Two more minutes, Michael, please. Okay, what it boils down to is that the, the zoning has to remain suburban residential so that we can put in the proper infill, uh, a project like the seniors project or a cul-de-sac to put in the proper number of homes. This is proper infill. And the density would be low so that it would not impact negatively the property there. Our, our groundwater would be taken care of and we wouldn't have the problem that we're gonna get with this Lanka prob uh, problem, this Lanka plan. So uh, the, the thing I want to say is let's keep it uh, suburban, residential. Uh, Lanka is welcome to use my ideas to put a cul-de-sac in there, get the housing, the houses in there. He could get that built a lot faster than what he wants to uh, jump through all the hoops and so on to get those apartment buildings in, which are so inappropriate. I have a lot of support. I know the community. I went around giving out 400 flyers to, to try and get the people to watch this meeting, which was kind of secretive. You talk about uh, sending letters to the community. I got a letter and about three or four other people that I spoke to that are near it. Everybody else in the subdivision, they don't even know anything about it. And I, 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 they're saying, I'm happy you're doing this. Thank you for the flyer. You know. It's like it's secretive. They're hiding it. They know it's not good. And they're trying to sneak it through in this COVID. I, I hate these Zoom meetings. I'm not technical with computers. I'm at a neighbor's house doing this. I, I, I don't know how to use the, this technology. I'm a senior. I don't have time to learn all this. I'm taking care of my wife. You well, know, uh, this definitely is the wrong thing for, uh, for the community, please. I beg the uh, councillors to vote it down. Don't allow a change of, uh, to a higher density. It's inappropriate. Michael, I, I'm, Michael, I'm, Michael okay. I'm gonna cut you off there. Uh, thank you for your input. Just to be clear, this is not a meeting at which we will make decisions about whether to support this or not. This is about receiving information and public input. Uh, does any member of the committee wish to, to have a question of the uh, last presenter? Seeing none, Michael, thank you. We'll move on, Alicia. Who, who would next like to speak? Uh, next, we have a John Waters. John, if you could just introduce yourself and let us know where you live, and then you've got a maximum of 10 minutes. John, are you with us? I'm working on it. Do you hear me? We can hear you, John, thank you. Very good. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Please, members of council, consider the proper growth for Burford. It is very unfortunate that this meeting has to be during COVID. 
if this meeting was in a, in, an in-person meeting, the council chambers would be stuffed full. I mean, stuffed full. Most people I talk to are not techie. They're not computer wise, so they cannot be here to speak their mind. Talking with many of these residents while handing out this brochure to remind people of this meeting, they tell me, I don't know how many times, time and time again, it is all wrong. This property, pro, pro, this project for this property is all wrong. Do councillors have a responsibility to Burford? The property owner has a responsibility to the neighbors. A, commu a community needs growth. There's no question about it, but needs to be guarded. We're here in Burford are very concerned about our water quality. Council needs to work with this property owner to clean up this property and put in eight or 10 single family homes. This would be complimentary to the neighborhood and to Burford. And the property owner would prove to be a very good neighbor. He would quickly, he's already going to be, going to be three years minimum tidy up, tying up his money to make this work. He's tied up time and money for over three years now and they're talking another year or two. He could get out from under this real quick if he decided to put in a cul-de-sac, six, eight, 10 homes, whatever it is, and he could turn them over pretty darn quick right now. And he would have money in the bank. I'm asking all these counselors here listening to me. Thank you very much. But I'll ask you one question. Would you like to live next to this proposed complex? Would you like to have this building three feet, four feet off the property line, 50 feet high, causing a shadow over your property? I would bet the answer is no. And neither do we. Thank you for your time. John, Remember? thank you. Thank you for your input. I just would, would make one comment. We have received a lot of letters. Uh, we have received a petition signed by many people. So despite Zoom and technical challenges, a lot of people have made their feelings known. Uh, I'll just open up to the committee and ask if they would like to ask any questions of you. Seeing none, I'll thank you again, John, for your input. Uh, Alicia, who would be the next speaker? Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, John. I do not have any more registered speakers on this item. <coughs> Thank you, Alicia. So I'm going to ask the question, is there anybody else in the audience, in the public that would like to speak to this item? I'll ask a third and final time. Is there anybody else would like to speak to this item? Seeing none, I'm going to hand the, the uh, matter back to committee to ask how they would like to proceed from here. Brian? Move the receive, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Seconded by uh, Councillor Wheat. Nope. Do we have any, any further questions? David? Uh, I was just gonna ask, uh, Mr. Chair, um, I, I do have some comments, but I was just wondering if um, perhaps the applicant could respond to some of the concerns brought up. Of course. Uh, Dave Aston, would you like to respond to the, what you heard from the two residents that spoke? Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity. I'm not really quite sure how to respond. We provided our uh, presentation. I, I heard the comments and received all, uh, all of the uh, comments. And um, this is you know, here tonight for information. Uh, we've we've heard the comments. We'll be working with staff on uh, a final report will need to come uh, for consideration. And in the meantime, uh, we'll consider these comments along with other comments that uh, may come from the staff process. Uh, and uh, you know, ultimately there'll be a, a report before council for consideration. I can answer some of maybe the details. Uh, there was a question on uh, the building. It's 81 meters in length, um, 20 meters wide, 12 meters tall. 
Uh, so if that uh, gives some information there, that would be e each building, uh, just to clarify. Um, and uh, we do have varying uh, unit types uh, on each floor that would be um, accessible. There'll be an elevator in the building, so there, there will be accessibility uh, considerations. So I think I'm not really sure what else, if, if there's something specific that uh, maybe yourself, Mr. Chair of Council, is thinking you wanted me to respond on, I, I, I'd try to. Uh, but I just would suggest we receive the comments and we'll uh, consider those and work with staff moving forward. Yeah. Councilor, are you okay with that? Yeah, I just, like I say, sometimes they, there, there's some issues raised that I know could be addressed this evening, and, and I just thought there was. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate <laughs> that. There were, so. Thank you, Dave. We have a motion Thank on you. the floor to receive for information. It's moved by Councilor Coleman, seconded by Councilor Wheat. David, do you want to speak to us? I, I do, yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, just um, the, the application itself, it seems very much like they're taking a square peg and they're trying to put it into a round hole. Um, you, you heard tonight that a, a lot of people don't consider it appropriate for the area. Um, I, I will disagree with Mike. Um, in his first presentation, he said probably 99% of the people were against it. I, I don't think it's quite that high. I think about in my experience, about 98% of the people are against it. Um, and, and again, it goes back to, it just doesn't seem right um, in this area. And, and I, I'm, it, it, it's unfortunate because as was mentioned, there, there, there's so many, there's so many different uh, options they could go with and, and it would just look great. It, it just make the area good. The, the people that support it, most of them are, are business people in the area. I got that. Um, even they are saying, okay, maybe it doesn't have to be quite that dense, but everybody, and even the ones against it, are supportive of something being done with this property. They just don't want to see what, well, what somebody called was a monstrosity going in there. Um, also mentioned tonight, too, was the fact that uh, many seniors um, are in the area. They don't have access to... Um, to Zoom, even to email. So I, I took, a, I field a lot of calls. Um, I'm sure other members have as well on this. And so I asked them, well, if you do have email, send it in. Um, otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll verbally, you know, pass along what I hear. So um, that's what I'm doing. I'm passing that along uh, from my constituents. There is a lot of opposition to it. And I don't have to go into the reasons because they, they've been discussed, I think, adequately tonight. But just know that, like I say, there is a lot a lot of the residents against it so i just i just it's a public meeting getting public input i'm bringing the public input and i'll leave it at that thank you mr, mr. thank you dave anybody else wish to make a comment before i call the vote robert yeah thank you mr chairman not so much as a comment not uh not a comment so much as uh, uh just uh, a question of clarification and procedure i think we're supposed to uh, hold our uh uh, comments and, and discussions to the uh, appropriate time when we uh, have all the information on the table. So I'm not going to get into the uh, uh, the aspects of the proposal, but I do want to uh, just uh, maybe ask a couple questions for clarification of process. Uh, David has, has said numerous times uh, tonight that he's going to take the information and uh, back and, and work with staff. I'm just wondering if, if there's a, an opportunity for uh, the applicant perhaps to work with the, uh, the, the neighborhood uh, a little bit. Um, is, is there the opportunity for uh, some uh, uh, public open houses and, and to field some of the uh, questions and, and perhaps to clear up some of the misconceptions and hear some of the uh, people that uh, are not technical uh, savvy to sit in here on Zoom. So in terms of process, uh, is there additional opportunity for the applicant and the, the staff to work with the residents uh, rather than uh, take everything back and, and then bring it back to a meeting and, and, and throw it upon us for a decision uh, at, at the next uh, meeting? Dave, would you like to answer that? 
uh, uh, through Mr. Chair, um, I, uh, I'd like to have the discussion with staff uh, uh, first and get a sense of uh, where this is heading. Um, I, just mindful of everyone's time in the process and uh, if there's you know, to have a pre-application meeting with uh, something that maybe isn't all that different than what uh, what you know, we've proposed at this point um, I'd be open to direction from staff but uh, again uh, want to be mindful of people's time and and if there was uh, a significant change uh, and we and there was a sense that that would be helpful to uh, have another information session. That's, you know, something that we could consider. Um, I guess, you know, if there's a sense that uh, that would be something helpful, if, if, uh, if counselors are okay with us dialoguing with staff, I think they can then dialogue uh, um, in, internally and provide some direction to us. I, I don't want to say no to more public engagement because I'm not one to do that. I just want it to be helpful and meaningful uh, uh, to have public engagement uh, over the long run and for the uh, purpose of the decision and the report that ultimately is going to come to council. Thank you, Dave. Robert, does that satisfy you? Yeah, it, it's important that the, uh, the public have uh, a feeling that they they have an influence on applications, and uh, if if it, it appears if it appears that the applicant and staff are working in in absence of perhaps public uh, uh, input and suggestions and and ideas from the public, uh, it, it's not a good situation. And I think everybody understands that. So uh, we have to make sure that uh, the public is allowed to influence uh, applications and we have to make our process uh, such that that can happen. And that, that's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, thank you, Robin. I certainly agree that uh, the public should have the opportunity to uh, engage in this. So I'm gonna call a motion on, I'll call the vote on this motion. All those in favor? Thank you. Thank you, David. This item will uh, be given back to staff. And as you've just heard, uh, there will be continuing dialogue between staff, applicant and public uh, before this matter comes back as a recommendation from staff. I'll move on then to item 8.2, which is an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment at 369 Maple Avenue South. And I think, Ryan, uh, this one is yours. Yeah, good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just allow me to share my screen here briefly. I think you'll see my presentation now. We can, thank you. Great, thank you very much. Okay, uh, so the county has received an application for official plan amendment and zoning bylaw amendment for the lands known as 369 Maple Avenue South. The subject lands are located on the west side of Maple Ave South, north of Melissa Avenue and south of Rutherford Street in Burford. Subject lands are approximately 0.39 hectares or one acre in size, having a frontage of approximately 39 meters on Maple Avenue South. Subject lands are surrounded primarily by low density residential uses to the south and east, a commercial user to the north and industrial uses to the west. Uh, the applicant is proposing to amend the County, of Bi the County of Brant official plan to establish a special policy area within the general commercial designation, which currently apply to the subject lands. The special policy area would establish provisions to permit uh, wholesaling, warehousing, and public self-storage within the subject lands while maintaining the underlying general commercial designation. Uh, the applicant is also proposing to rezone the subject lands from prestige industrial M1 to special exception general commercial C2 in order to permit a warehouse, wholesale establishment, and public self-storage warehouse on the subject lands. Uh, the next steps in this application would be to receive comments from internal and external agencies, as well as feedback at this information meeting. Uh, following the circulation period, uh, this application will be brought back at a later date for a formal recommendation from staff. Uh, thank you. This concludes my remarks. And I note Mr. Hawkins from MHBC Planning is available uh, to make a presentation as well. I'm happy to take any questions now. 
Thank you, Ryan. Questions from the committee to Ryan. David Miller, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Just a quick question there, uh, Ryan. It looks like the, the only the only exit is onto Maple Ave. That's correct. There's no exit onto Park Park Ave or anything like that. Or... Mr. Okay. Okay, seeing no other questions, I will then thank you, Ryan, and ask if the applicant or the agent of the applicant would like to speak. Thank you, Chair Bell. I do have a presentation which I can put up. So I won't uh, go over everything that, that Ryan's already covered, but the property, uh, as you can see, has some existing buildings on it, and it does have an access from uh, Maple Avenue. Surrounding uses, Ryan alluded to, so there's a, a broad mix of uses in the area, including an industrial use immediately behind this property, which is a pathway access, driveway access right beside this property that leads back to the home hardware uh, industrial use. There's a, a mix of residential uses to the south um, and some commercial and residential uses to the north and, of course, agricultural uses as well. This is a bit of a closer look at the property, so we have two existing buildings uh, at the very rear side of the property, uh, almost abutting uh, the side lot line in this location and the rear lot line. You see the driveway that runs along the north side of the property and then there's the driveway access on Maple Avenue in this location and sort of commercial industrial use immediately to the north and then the much larger uh, use and parking lot to the west. So the development uh, itself, it, essentially amounts to repurposing the two existing buildings on the property. So that would involve some internal renovations to those buildings as well as external uh, renovations to improve the aesthetics of both buildings. The, uh, the owner of the property um, does renovations for other uh, you know, developers or uh, business owners. So they're, they're in the business of um, providing the products that people may use to renovate uh, existing buildings elsewhere in the community as well as in the Waterloo region. Uh, so this building would uh, serve two purposes or these buildings would serve two purposes for them. It would allow them to store some of the goods um, that they use for that purpose and it would allow them in the wholesaling side to sort of create a, a demonstration um, area where they could show um, these customers what they could do with their buildings depending on what type of building it is. Uh, and then examples of some of the products that they might be able to use for their own renovation purposes. So that's what those two existing buildings would be used for. The third uh, component of the project is to create uh, public self-storage units. So the, the balance of the site, which is um, disturbed, but there's no buildings on it, would be uh, developed with new public self-storage units that anyone in the community could uh, rent out if they uh, had the need to store excess goods for, for whatever reason, household items, et cetera, that a lot of people who move or upsize or downsize, they find sometimes they don't have enough room in, in their new uh, location. And so this serves a, a purpose that uh, most communities uh, find a need for. And this, uh, this property is uh, ideally situated to take advantage of it. It's already a disturbed part of the site. Um, but it would be an opportunity to upgrade that part of the site and provide a new use um, for Burford and Brant County. Ryan's uh, alluded to the, the general commercial designation on the property. So it allows quite a range of uses, but it, uh, it does not allow public self-storage warehouse and wholesale. So the, the purpose of the amendment is to keep the general commercial designation. Uh, we're cognizant of, of the direction that the new official plan would take to. It, it sort of aligns with that type of those types of land uses um, in, in a commercial sense. And so the special policy area would keep the existing permissions. It's not, uh, not changing the, the over, overarching land use designation. It's simply adding those three new uses for this property. In terms of the zoning, um, it's, a, it's a bit of an anomaly um, in the sense that the official plan designates it commercial and the zoning bylaw um, zones it industrial. And so we have a situation here where even though it's designated uh, industrial and some of the industrial zones do allow wholesale warehouse and public self-storage, the M1 zone does not. So we thought it would be appropriate to bring the zoning into conformity with the official plan. So align it 
in the sense that we have general commercial in the official plan, general commercial in the zoning bylaw, and then introduce a site specific to permit the three um, uses. So in our, in our opinion, it, it aligns uh, with the provincial policies, um, bringing the zoning into conformity with the official plan, um, removes that discrepancy between the zoning and the official plan. The three uses are low impact uses. They're not gonna generate a lot of uh, daily visits to the site. Um, they're, not gonna, they're not gonna generate a lot of parking needs. These are sort of low impact uses um, that serve a specific need. Um, and that are, are able to take advantage of the sort of larger, largest uh, buildings that are already on the property. And we view it as an, uh, as an opportunity to upgrade the aesthetics of the site, um, up, upgrade the aesthetics of the buildings themselves, and then to introduce the public self-storage use, which um, will serve uh, a need in the community. Thank you, Chair Bell. Chair Bell, thank you. Can you just return us to the big screen? Thank you. Um, does committee have any questions for the applicant, Trevor? David, go ahead. Will you be removing that ugly fence that's over it? <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, what we want to do along the front is to, uh, to increase the landscaping. So we've, we've purposely provided about six meters of space between the public self-storage and the front of the property. So if, if it's a situation, we want to uh, we want to ensure that the the units have enough security. So we'll explore whether whether fencing is needed for that. But we certainly are looking to upgrade the landscaping along the front of the property. Here, thank you. Thank you. That, was that a cat that just wandered in front of you? <laughs> just just a stuffed animal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, at this point, I'm going to open the meeting to the public. Um, Alicia, do we have anybody online that would like to speak to this item? Uh, I do not have anyone listed to speak to this item. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, I will just go through the, the rules then. Uh, I'll ask for a second time if there's anybody that would like to speak. Um, Mayor Bailey, are you waving at me? You would like to speak? Uh, Councillor Chambers had his hand up and you missed him, Councillor Bell. I do apologize. Robert, go ahead. Oh, it's okay, Mr. Chairman. I, I can. Uh, I, I was just going to ask the uh, applicant. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of confusion in the neighborhood. At, at one time, this property uh, was used in conjunction with the neighboring property uh, for the same purpose, and now the neighboring property, I think, which is owned by the same uh, 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 applicant, uh, is there's construction going on there, and one is not related to the other is, is, is the clarification I'm trying to, to uh, get. Uh, through you, Chair Bell, I'm not, I'm not aware that the property owner is linking any other property to this project. It's an independent project. Sufficient answer, Robert? I'll have to dig a little deeper in the in the neighborhood, I guess, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'll go back to where I was. Uh, it's my second time of asking if anybody, mem any members of the public, wish to speak to this. Uh, third time of asking, and a final time of asking. Hearing none, then I'm going to close the public se section of this meeting and pass the um, requ the request back to committee to uh, make a decision. John Wheat. Move to move, move to receive. Thank you, John. Seconded by John Pierce. Uh, any further questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. So Trevor, uh, this will go in back to staff and uh, they'll work on it with your input and public input and we'll get it back for a decision at some point in the future. Thank you for your input tonight, Trevor. Thank you, Chair Bell. Okay, moving right along. Um, item 8.3 is a zoning bylaw amendments at uh, high, 184 Highway 53A, 53, sorry, and it's Amanda uh, to lead us through. That is correct. Can you just confirm you can see my presentation? We can, thank you. Excellent, all right. So thank you through the chair. An application for rezoning has been received from Megan and Darren Weatherby for the lands municipally known as 184 Highway number 53. 
Um, in terms of the proposal, the applicant is seeking to rezone an area of approximately 442 square meters in order to facilitate a lot line adjustment. It is my understanding the lot line adjustment is being sought in order to allow for a future expansion of their business on the abutting parcel. The applicant is also seeking a site specific provision for the retained lot as an area of 2,394 square meters is proposed, but an area of 3,000 square meters is required. And then in regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as hamlets and villages. The official plan com contemplates for residential and neighborhood commercial uses on lands designated as hamlets and villages. And then in regards to the zoning bylaw, the, the rezoning is required as the lands to be severed and merged with the abutting parcel are currently zoned as residential hamlet, whereas the benefiting parcel is zoned as general commercial. Furthermore, the site specific provision is required for the retained parcel as the minimum lot area is proposed to be deficient. And then in regards to my recommend, or sorry, in regards to next steps, the applicant application is to be circulated and staff will, will prepare a planning report with a professional recommendation. I'm happy to answer any questions, questions the committee members may have. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, does committee have any questions for Amanda? Seeing none, thank you. Then I'll, I'll move on to the applicant or the agent of the applicant. I can see Bob Phillips. I presume you are therefore the agent of the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mayor Bailey, members of the committee. Uh, this is an application by the Weatherbees that will uh, assist in the expansion of their uh, commercial operations. Uh, the Weatherbees, I believe, are on the call as well to help answer any questions. But I think Amanda outlined the application completely and uh, fully, and I'm just here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Do we have any, does committee have any questions for Bob? Seeing none, then I'll, I'll move on to the public uh, part of this item. Uh, Alicia, do we have any members of the public that wish to speak to this item? I do not have any members of the public registered to speak to this item. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, but I will ask a second time if there's any member of the public on the call that would like to speak. And finally, a third time, uh, if any member of the public would like to speak. Hearing none, I'll close the public part of this meeting and pass the matter back to committee for their, uh, to deal with it. How would committee like to deal with it? David? Uh, move to receive, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Seconded by Joan Gatwood. Any comments or further questions before I call the vote? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. Those in favor? Thank you, Bob. Thank you, the Weatherbees. Appreciate you coming along tonight. Thank you very much. Um, moving on, 8.4, uh, zoning bylaw amendment, uh, 729 Mount Pleasant Road. And Amanda, you're on again. I'm on again. Again, can you just confirm you can see the presentation? We can, thank you. Awesome, all right. So thank you through the chair. An application for rezoning has been received from Robert and Megan Inez for the lands municipally known as 729 Mount Pleasant Road. The subject lands are located within the secondary urban settlement area of Mount Pleasant and are located on the west side of Mount Pleasant Road and are partially municipally serviced. In terms of the proposal, the applicant is seeking to rezone, seeking a rezoning to facilitate a severance Specifically, they're seeking a site specific provision for a reduced lot frontage of 17 meters and to place a holding on the severed parcel due to capacity restrictions. In regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as suburban residential with the suburban residential designation contemplating for residential development. The official plan also encourages development to be municipally serviced where possible, infill, develop, infill development and for development to be directed to urban settlement areas such as Mount Pleasant. And then in regards to the zoning bylaw, the subject lands are currently zoned as suburban residential. The applicant is proposing a site specific provision for a reduced lot frontage of 17 meters on the severed and to place a holding on the severed parcel due to capacity restrictions. And then in regards to next steps, the application is to be circulated and staff will, will prepare a planning report with a professional recommendation. I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, any questions for Amanda from the committee? Seeing none, then I'll, I'll move on to ask if the applicant or the agent of the applicant would like to speak to this item. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Rob Innes. Um, I do not have anything to add to Amanda's report. 
Okay, Rob, if you just stay on the line in case there are questions for you. Uh, does committee have any questions of Rob Innes? Seeing none, uh, I'm gonna open then the meeting, this part of the meeting to the public. Uh, Alicia, do we have anybody uh, from the public that would like to speak tonight? I do not have anyone for the public registered to speak on this item. Thank you, um, but I will ask a second time. If there's anyone on the call that would like to speak to this item from the public? And finally, a third time. Seeing none, I'll close the public part of this meeting and ask how committee would like to deal with this item. Councillor Coleman. I also move it. The re Thank you. Mr. Chairman. And seconded by Mayor Bailey. Any further questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call the... Uh, are you voting, Joan, or commenting? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for catching my hand. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if that long building that's shown in the diagram, is that an old barn? I'll we'll ask Amanda to answer that question. Uh, thank you to the chair. Councilor Goward, are you referring to a building on the retained parcel? So the parcel to the south? Um, it would be a parcel to the west of the proposed mm -hmm. new lot. Oh, the long building back there. Um, it's through the chair. It's my understanding that is not an agricultural structure, but I can confirm that in my upcoming report. So, okay, Joan. You're going to put that in the next report, what that is? Correct. Okay, thank you. There, there used to be a chicken farm there. That's why I asked that question. Thank okay. you. I will then call the vote. All those in favor? That's motion passed. Uh, Rob, uh, this matter will be uh, referred back to staff uh, who will talk with you and take more input and will bring forward a recommendation at some future time. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, moving on to A5, um, zoning bylaw amendment at 50, 571 Mount Pleasant Road. Amanda, you're a busy girl this evening. Uh, just to confirm, you can see my presentation okay? We can, thank you. Excellent. All right, so thank you through the chair. An application for rezoning has been received from Derek and Denise Pleziak for the lands municipally known as 571 Mount Pleasant Road. Uh, the subject lands are located within the secondary urban settlement area of Mount Pleasant and are located on the west side of Mount Pleasant Road and are partially serviced. In regards to the proposal, the applicant is seeking a rezoning to facilitate a severance. Specifically, the applicant is proposing, proposing to rezone the subject lands from agricultural to suburban residential to be aligned with the official plan designation. Furthermore, the applicant is proposing a holding on the severed parcel due to capacity restrictions. In regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as suburban residential with the suburban residential designation contemplating for residential development. The official plan also encourages development to be municip municipally serviced where possible, infill development, and for development to be directed to urban settlement areas such as Mount Pleasant. And then in regards to the zoning bylaw, the subject lands are currently zoned as agricultural and are being proposed to be rezoned to suburban residential to be aligned with the official plan designation and to facilitate a future severance. And then in regards to next steps, the application is to be circulated and staff will, will prepare a planning report with a professional recommendation. One public comic comment was received through circulation and staff have provided a response confirming MDS is not required as the subject lands are located within the secondary urban settlement area of Mount Pleasant per guideline number 36 in the MDS guidelines. I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you, Amanda, and thank you for that response on MDS. Um, Joan, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, yes, Amanda, that response regarding MDS. So to answer the, um, the question of the people whose 5.75 hectare property abuts these lands, um, agricultural lands, um, it doesn't require MDS. 
because it's now within a settlement boundary area. However, um, will this impact any future um, expansion of the horse building? Uh, thank you through the chair. If the owners of that agricultural structure wanted to expand their operation, whether it be to add different kinds of animals or add more horses, um, they would potentially be restricted by this new severance and the other existing dwellings in that area. There's the potential for that, but um, the way the MDS guidelines read, specifically guideline number 36, it says MDS does not apply within, within urban settlement areas, which includes Mount Pleasant. So if MDS doesn't apply, why can't they expand? I'll see the chair. It's a bit of a unique um, situation where there's- Joan, a uh, uh, Amanda, if I may. Uh, Joan, I think we've moved off the, the topic here. Can, can we just, it, it, it's not relevant directly to this application. If an application comes from the people that want to expand, then we can consider it then. So I'm gonna ask if we move on, please. Mr. Chairman, I, I would say it is relevant because there's a letter attached and um, they, they want to ensure that our ability to have horses would not be impacted. And that's what I'm trying to determine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for Amanda? Seeing none, I'll move then on to ask if the applicant or the agent of the applicant would like to speak to this item. There is nothing more like that. Thank you, um, very succinct. Um, in which case, um, I will move then on to the public section of this meeting. Uh, if, if Alicia, is any member of the public wishing to speak to this item? I do not have any uh, members of the public registered to speak on this item. Okay, thank you. But I will ask a second time, but in case anybody is on the line that would like to speak and hasn't registered, I'll ask a third time. Hearing none, seeing none, I will call the public section of this meeting to a close and I will pass the matter back to committee to ask how they would like to decide. Councillor Weed. Move to receive his information. Thank you very much. Seconded by Councillor Howes. Any further comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Thank you. Um, to um, our colleague from Waters Holden, uh, this item will then go back to staff. Uh, we'll be prepared further for, with a recommendation coming to this committee at some future time. So thank you for attending. I do appreciate it. Uh, moving then to 8.6, it's a zoning bylaw amendment at 42 Hammond Road. And Dan, uh, you're going to lead us through. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a zoning bylaw amendment application for 42 Hammond Road as indicated, and uh, the agent uh, from IBI Group is with us this evening. And this item is being presented for information purposes only. So the subject lands are located along the south side of McBay Road, north, uh, east of Hammond Road, and also have frontage along Barton. The subject lands are on your screen highlighted in red. They have an area of approximately 72 hectares. Uh, as I mentioned, there's approximately 170 meters of frontage along Hammond Road. The official plan designates the subject lands. Uh, the brown area is identified as our rural residential designation. Uh, the property is also designated agricultural with small portions of natural heritage. The zoning on the property is entirely agricultural and you can see surrounding land uses uh, also reflect that rural residential designation. And in the zoning, you can see that there are um, a number of properties to the north and to the south that have the rural residential zoning on the property as well. So the application is proposing to rezone the western portion of the subject property from agricultural to rural residential in order to implement the current official plan designation being rural residential. And the site specific regulation for, uh, or sorry, the, the ap application also proposes 
to apply a site-specific regulation for minimum lot area within the, the uh, zoning bylaw amendment from, sorry, uh, the application also uh, re is required to implement a reduced or recognition of the reduced lot area for the remain farm parcel. Uh, staff are also proposing that we apply a site-specific provision to prohibit a dwelling to be permitted as a permitted use on the retained farmland. As uh, part of these, the uh, application submission, the applicants have provided a planning justification report, a review of MDS, a preliminary survey and site grading, um, proof of potable water and quality, and uh, have reviewed sight lines along Hammond Road. And some of this, uh, the technical review has been ongoing and we are working through some technical um, comments that have been received regarding sight lines and we continue to work with the applicants uh, meeting um, ensuring that those technical comments are being addressed. So in terms of next steps um, we will circulate the application. Uh, we have circulated the application and we will circulate again to the public uh, receiving public comments. I should note that we have received a few letters from neighboring residents with concerns about the size and scale of the proposed development as it relates to uh, the severed and retained lands. Um, so they will receive a copy of the notice again when this moves forward for recommendation and staff will prepare a formal report and the recommendation will be presented to the Planning and Development Committee for consideration. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, questions for Dan. David Miller. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, three to, to the planner. Dan, I'm just wondering, what, what am I missing there? You said we go down from 40 hectares to 25 hectares. I, I'm not, can you explain that again? Maybe maybe so I missed the, something. I didn't so see as it, it As it exists today, well, I'll start. So the minimum requirement for a uh, farm parcel in the zoning is 40 hectares. The subject lands as they exist today are currently undersized. So they're considered legal non-conforming. The, as soon as we apply the Planning Act application and we sever lands away from that farm parcel, that legal non-conforming status will then need to be recognized. So this application, uh, we, can, we can recognize the remaining area that is left over. So it's just to ensure that the, re the remaining farm parcel continues to comply with the zoning. But it's not 40 hectares now in total. That's right. So we'll have to recognize uh, the deficient area through the zoning. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Dan? Seeing none, thank you, Dan. I'll move then on to uh, the Applicant or the agent of the applicant, I think Douglas, you're going to speak on this one. If I may, if I may speak, and with the chair and to the members and the and staff and the public, I appreciate that staff would have explained what the request is for. I want to also speak to only a few points. Uh, we did submit a technical review to deal with whether the proposed points of access would meet the standards. In through the review and evaluation of that request by county staff, it was determined that there it needed to be amended. So the, so the review process has determined that we are required to submit a revised submission. I wish to inform that as a result of that review, we are going to be asking staff and we will be making a formal submission to inform that the request is being amended to change the boundary of the proposed first residential parcel. You will see that we have amended it 
or propose to amend it to create a point where access can be obtained and meet the technical standards. As a result of that, part one becomes a little bigger and part two becomes a little smaller and there would be some construction in the future should it be approved subject to an access permit and other uh, approvals. So I want to inform that there is a request going to be made to amend the request to change the boundary of part one and part two. The second point I wish to bring forth is staff have informed us as part of their evaluation, they, they are going to be making a request that the retained parcel, which is as a result of these two applications would be 25 hectares where previously they were about 28 hectares. Staff are saying that that parcel should not be entitled to a building permit in the future and that it remained as a field. I want to inform committee that we will strongly oppose that request for a variety of reasons and that we will put that forth in a further submission to staff. We believe that having the flexibility of having the ability to have a farm buildings and farm house on the retained in the future is good planning and supportive of providing a diversity of farms. We would be prepared, and we have seen this elsewhere, where the house is accessory to the farm structures. So we're going to put that forth. So those are the two changes that I wish to speak to. And we will be making that formal request following this meeting. We appreciate that staff have explained the request. We just don't necessarily agree with some of their conclusions. And I would be pleased to answer any questions. Douglas, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Douglas. Uh, any questions for Douglas? Joan, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. If I understood um, the delegation from IBI, the applicant is wanting a house on the remaining farmland. Is that what you said? And If I may respond through the chair, what we are requesting in the application is the ability in the future, should a residence wish to be located on the retained parcel of 25 or plus or minus hectares, that it be done so as an accessory building to a farm building. Okay. So you are right. If I follow up, then could you tell me at the corner of Barton and my glasses here? Corner of Barton, there where the bend is in the road. There is a house severed off that farm parcel already. Do you know when that was done? No, I do. Again, through the chair, I do not know when that was done. I may add, and I and I apologize. Also, to join me tonight is a family member of the applicant, Mr. Tyler 
shoot, he may be able to answer. Thank you. Tyler, are you able to answer that question from uh, Councillor Gatwood? Hello? Hello, Tyler. Uh, can you answer the question that uh, Councillor Gatwood just posed to Douglas? Yes, that, that house that used to be part of the, uh, it was a 40 acre farm on that side that uh, ran all along McBay Road. And it got, uh, the house got severed off, but that's when my parents bought <clears throat> the remainder of that farm. And it was joined on to the, uh, the house and the rest of the farm on Hammond Road. You can see the tree line that runs uh, north and south beside the, uh, the house that runs parallel with McBay Road. That was severed off and I think, I don't know exactly when, I think it was 2004. I'd have to ask my parents what the exact date is, but it was quite some time ago, but it was just around 40 acres on that side of the fence line. Okay. And it was joined. Yes. Thank, thank you, Tyler. Uh, okay. Joan, does that, that help you? You're muted, Joan. Yes, Mr. Chairman, it does. It appears that two parcels have merged into one, but there was already a severance on that previous parcel. So thank you. Any further questions to Douglas? Seeing none, I'll open this uh, item up to the public then. Uh, Alicia, does, do we have anybody from the public that wishes to speak to this item? I have no members from the public who are registered to speak on this item. Thank you. Um, but I will ask a second time in case there's anybody on the line that hasn't registered that may want to speak. And I'll ask a final and the third time Seeing, hearing none, I will close the public part of this meeting and pass the matter back to committee to ask how they would like to deal with it. Uh, Councillor Weed? this information. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Coleman. Uh, any questions on, on this? If not, I'll call the vote. Those in favour? Thank you. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, the matter will be taken up by staff and we'll come back at some point in the future with a recommendation to this committee. Thank you for coming tonight. And that concludes the uh, public hearings under the Planning Act to receive information from the public. And we move on to public hearings under the Planning Act to consider staff recommendations. We have one, it is in regard of a zoning bylaw amendment, 55 Highway 2. And Amanda, once again, you're taking the lead. And once again, can I get you just to confirm you can see my screen? We can, thank you. Excellent, all right, so thank you to the chair. An application for rezoning has been received from Elder Plans Inc. for the lands municipally known as 55 Highway Number Two. The subject lands are rectangular in shape and are located on the south side of Highway Number Two, east of the Highway Two in Maple Avenue North interse intersection. In regards to the proposal, the applicant is proposing to rezone a portion of the subject lands to prohibit a dwelling on the retained land as a permitted use and to permit a reduced lot frontage of 124 meters in an area of approximately 39.1 hectares. I do note the applicant recently underwent a severance application in September 2021, which was conditionally approved. In regards to the official plan, the subject lands are designated as agricultural and natural heritage. The surplus dwelling area is designated as agricultural and no new residential building lots are being created. In regards to the zoning bylaw, the subject lands are currently zoned as agricultural and natural heritage. The applicant is proposing to prohibit a dwelling on the retained lands and to permit a reduced lot frontage of 124 meters in an area of 39.1, whereas a minimum frontage of 150, 150 meters and a minimum lot area of 40 hectares is required. And then in regards to my recommendation, uh, through public circulation, no comments were received. And then I am recommending approval of this application and I'm happy to answer any questions the committee members may have. Thank you, Amanda. Um, does the committee have any questions for Amanda? 
seeing none, uh, I would then invite the applicant or the agent of the applicant to speak if she so wishes. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Chair. It's Mary Elder speaking. Welcome to our committee. Uh, would you like to present anything or be ready just to answer questions? I think the staff member has done a great job of outlining what we're proposing and I think we'll leave it with that. And if there's any questions, I'll answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, does the committee have any questions for Mary? Seeing none, then I'll, I'll open up this item to the public. Uh, Alicia, do we have anybody uh, on the line that wishes to speak to this item? I do not uh, have anyone registered to speak on this item. Thank you. Um, but I will ask a second time if there's anybody on the line that uh, perhaps was not registered that might want to speak. And I'll ask a third and final time. Uh, seeing and hearing nobody there, I will close the public part of this uh, item and pass the matter back to committee and seek a recommendation. Councillor Weed. Move to approve the recommendation. Thank you. Seconded by Mayor Bailey. Any final questions, comments? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favour? Mm. It is approved. Mary, the motion is approved. Uh, your zoning bylaw is approved. Thank you for coming this evening. Thank you so much. That brings to an end the public hearings for this evening. Um, item 10 is consent items, of which there are none. We have no staff reports. We have no communications. Uh, I didn't ask if, I think I did ask if there was any other business, but if anybody would like to take this opportunity, seeing none, uh, I'd look for a motion to move in camera from uh, Councillor Pierce, seconded by Mark. All those in favour? Thank you. Motion approved. I'll leave Alicia to do the magic. Councillor Wee, Councillor Coleman, we're just trying to get you to move into the breakout room. Uh, just bear with us a second, okay? Oh, there's Coleman gone. Councillor Weed, I'm going to try and put you in the waiting room and then see if that allows me to move you over to the breakout room. So if, uh, just, if I just... If you want to just leave me here, I, I'm, I'm not going to say any words. 
OK, you're good. OK, I'll do that.
And I think we're all back. Who we're missing? Missing, missing, missing somebody. Councillor Coleman. Councillor Coleman. He was here. He's probably um, decided in, the meeting is over. And indeed, unless there's any other issues that can be brought forward for the betterment of the county, uh, I would like somebody to make a motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Thank you very much. Enjoyed that meeting.